So here we are in Mastercam with this little part. Now the problem is, number one, we don't have a lathe to machine this on. And number two, since we don't have a lathe, we've had no reason to purchase the lathe product inside of Mastercam. So how can we go about programming this part up uh, in Mastercam to cut this round part on our CNC mill? Most obviously, some might say, why, why not just, you know, run some tool paths on this? Why don't you just grab an end mill, throw some stock in the, in the, in the vise, and a couple, couple boss profiles, a little bit of 3D machining here on this angle here, some chamfer milling, some radius cutting, and Bob's your uncle, right? Not, not a big deal. Uh, but I, I think with that, you're, you're looking at at least uh, three tool changes, probably. You're going to want to rough this thing out. Uh, you're going to want to have a finishing end mill to hit these diameters. You're going to need a bull nose end mill to hit this rad in here. And with that bull nose, you could surface this angle over here that blends into that top rad. And I guess you could surface this 45 as well. But if you want to save time uh, as far as cycle time, maybe a chamfer mill is a better idea there. So you're looking at three, four tools. With the surfacing in here, that can take some cycle time, especially if you're looking for a decent finish. So that's where something like a turning tool is obviously going to come in handy. I am kind of cheating here a little bit. Um, I said we don't have a lathe in the shop and I said we don't have master cam lathe, uh, but I'm going to go out on a limb and assume we've got a turning tool that we can uh, use inside of our mill. So we don't have a lathe, but we have a, we have a lathe tool. Okay, so that's, yeah. So what we're going to do here is we have to somehow uh, lie to Mastercam about, about what we're doing. And so let's get into this this little lie that we're about to about to do here. So first things first, uh, I'm in a, a top view of this part so I can uh, look straight down at it like this. This is different than how you would actually do lathe on normal Mastercam. But what we're doing here is, is nothing normal. So uh, yeah, don't take this as an instructional videos for how to do lathe when you actually really want to do lathe. This is how to do lathe when you don't have a lathe on your mill. Okay, so we're at a, at a top view here. Here you can see my origin at the, at the middle of the part. And what I'm going to do with this part is draw the wireframe down the front of it. So from the front view of this part is where I'm going to slice it. And I've already got that slice completed on a different level. Okay, so there is that slice. You can see the geometry is just the profile of the part. So let's hop straight into the tool path and then we'll get into the other stuff about how you would actually go about cutting this uh, in a second here. So I'm on a, a mill machine, obviously. We're, we're doing a, a lathe part on the mill and a simple contour is the tool path that I'm after. So I need to chain this in 3D. Uh, keep in mind, I am coming at it from the top so I'm doing a 3D chain, a partial chain, and I'm not grabbing the face here. A facing would be a totally separate operation. I'm just going to show one, one pass. So what I'm going to do is grab the partial chain that starts on the chamfer and ends at the last diameter. So in this tool path, uh, the, the tool that we select doesn't matter. We're not going to be compensating for any tool, but I've selected a tool that is kind of uh, going to represent the stock that I'm going to be using. Okay, so this is the stock I'm using, a one inch, not a one inch end mill, but a one inch bar stock. Speeds and feeds, you would have to set according to how you're cutting this. I'm not going to get into speeds and feeds at all here. As far as cut parameters go, there's a few things we need to do over here. And that's number one, turn compensation off. And number two is this should be set to a 3D contour. Typically, when you're using the 2D contour toolpath, you're in a 2D mode. Uh, but 3D is what we need here for this guy to work correctly. Lead in and lead outs will have to be turned off. We'll talk more about that in a second. Everything else is left off. Linking parameters. We can use some linking parameters just to approach, uh, you know, set our rapids and our feet approach distances. And depth, we're not going to set any depth though. So this is just going to basically control our uh, approaching rapid to feeding motions. Beyond that, that's all we need. Just going to hit OK. So there is my, my tool path. Now, what is this going to do? So I'm going to hop into a back plot here. And this is going to look completely awful at first, but trust me, this, this will work. We're on the right track here. Uh, you can see the center of the cutter is coming down on this basically profile of the part. As I step down through, you can see it's following. The middle of the cutter is following basically the, that line that we just 
chained. So what good is that? This is where it's now important as to what we actually do on the mill. So on the mill, here's what we're going to do. Number one, we're going to put a vise on our table. Okay, rocket science here, I know, right? Uh, number two, though, this is where we're going to do something different. We're putting a lathe tool in that vise. Let me just turn off this part for a second here and turn that off. And now you can kind of start to see what's happening here. You can see this tool path over here. And you can see where our datum is set. So basically when you go to your machine, your X0, Y0 is going to be the tip of your cutting tool. Uh, Z0 is going to be when the bottom of your part hits obviously the top of your tool. So if you hop into a back plot now, let's get this from a front view. Remember that this end mill is one inch, uh, even though it's one inch stock. Keep in mind as well that even though I've got a tool here, it's not going to actually cut our end mill. It's not the way Mastercam is set up to work. But you can see it plunges down. Uh, obviously, this is a pretty healthy cut, but we'll talk more about roughing in a second. And you can see there's the chamfer, and it's cut the first diameter. There's that little radius, comes up the shoulder. Little blend rad there, gets into that angled portion, and then does the uh, back uh, diameter, and then rapids off. So basically what you'd be left with when you're at this position is something that looks like that. So basically that is the part we just cut on the end of this stock that's sitting in our mill spindle. So that's one other weird thing about this using the mill as a lathe is you need to draw your part kind of upside down as to how you're going to be machining it in the milling spindle. So I've drawn my part this way and the result of that part obviously will be the opposite way. Okay, so what about that awful motion at the end of the tool path there? Let's get into that for a second. So the lead-in is not too bad. Um, this is too heavy of a cut. We need to put a roughing pass in. Let's talk about that in a second. But there, right there, that move right there. So we cut this diameter and then basically it's wrapping straight back. As mentioned, the lead-in and lead-outs will not work the way you think they do. They're going to want to enter in, in the 2D world. Now, we could use points and stuff. Uh, we could use entry points and try and get something that works. But I think the easiest way to get a lead-in, at least how you would like it, is just to include that geometry in your toolpath. Here's the wireframe that I chained. So what I'm going to do with this is just add some lead-in and lead-out motions to it. Maybe we'll just modify a length. We'll extend this by 100 thou past the end of the part. And then maybe we want to lead out by 50, 50 thou. Let's go in and rechain this. Partial loop and include that lead out motion. There, so now our tool path is going to lead in here, cut the profile cut past the end and lead out and then retract. So as far as roughing goes, uh, yeah, there's no canned cycles for this guy, unlike your actual lathe. So we would have to, again, force some geometry output here to do this. So easiest thing to do, maybe you would just include some additional geometry out here. You would probably take more time than I am at, at creating that geometry and creating it <laughs> straight and creating it in the correct location. But I think this will at least relay the, uh, the idea here. Let's even go ahead and try and uh, include this. Let's go add single, add one, two, and three. Make sure we go one, two, three, four. So we're cutting them in order, uh, and then we should be able to. There's roughing pass number one. Obviously, we should have included a lead out motion with that guy. Cut two, cut three, and then the finished profile. So that's a way we could uh, do our roughing is just to create some extra chains. And uh, yeah, there we go. There's how you could use your mill to be a lathe inside Mastercam. 
So maybe to expand on this a little bit, so we talked about, you know, we're in this shop in this hypothetical situation where we've got mills, but we don't have a lathe and we don't have lathe product inside of Mastercam. So the, the boss is real nice and he decides, hey, uh, we, we're doing lots of this stuff and I, I hate to see the guys tying the mills up for lathe work. I'm going to buy them a lathe. So boss goes out, buys you a nice new lathe, uh, but he forgot to uh, issue the PO for the lathe license in Mastercam. What are you going to do? So in the next video, we'll talk about using uh, Mastercam's mill license to program your CNC lathe.